Welcome to Socials with the Saints. This is a time to take a break and meet someone that can inspire us in our everyday life. A saint. Someone who lived a faith and encountered many situations in the world and today we can learn from them. We'll also take a walk through history because history really helps us understand what was going on in the world not only at that time, but it helps us to understand a lot of situations that may confront us today. Life is a mystery, but it certainly is very good. And that's why we go to the saints. We look to see where the saints can help us to see life in a, in a very good way, in a way that we can grow towards Christ, grow in our faith, and grow in hope. Well, let's begin. We're going to meet St. Bernadette Subaru. She was a young girl living in a village in Lourdes, France. Who would you choose to give a message to the world? Would you choose someone, a nation leader or some company that could really get, articulate the message in various venues? Well, the Mary, the mother of God, chose a young girl, this young girl from Lourdes, France, named Bernadette Subaru. Now, Lourdes is in a small village in the Pyrenees Mountains in France, and it was small at the time of, of um, uh, when Bernadette lived there in 1858, 1850s. And so as a young girl, she came from a very poor family. Uh, her, her parents were very faithful Catholics, and they actually uh, raised her children with a deep faith and a strong foundation with the Catholic faith. And they were living in a a house, not really a house, an area that used to be a prison cell. It was called the Cachot. This Cachot had just one room with two windows overlooking a back open area, a dung heap, a heap of dung would be, and they had a fire, a small fireplace and a stone carved sink, and that's it. And so her siblings, her brother and sister, and her parents and herself the five would live in this one room casho, this former prison cell in, this, in the village of Lourdes. One night, they ran out of wood because they had sold the wood in order to get food. Her father, who had been um, working at a mill, had lost his job because he had injured his eye. And so he had to find another employment and he was trying to find a job in the meanwhile, her and her family had to move from their house where they were living into this casho, the prison cell. So when the family was uh, financially in need, um, they were selling the wood for food and they ran out of wood one night. So Bernadette pleaded with her mother, mother, please let me go to the river Gave, which was not too far away, to gather wood and burn at the fireplace for warmth and to cook the little bit of food they did have. And so uh, the mother was concerned because Bernadette had asthma. She had had physical problems. When she was a young girl, she had uh, cholera, and that resulted in not only asthma, but other complications in her health, which resulted of her missing a lot of, a lot of school. So she wasn't able to read or write even at the age of 14. And this is where we are today. The night that she went to gather wood at the River Gave was on February, the, the, the morning, I should say, because it was early in the morning. It was uh, February the 11th, exactly. Uh, it was a cloudy day um, and very cold. So as Bernadette left her family home with her sister and a friend to walk to the River Gave to gather wood, they came and um, they were going to take off their wooden clogs to cross over the river and go to the other side, which was a public land, and gather the wood. Now, because the two girls were so excited about being out and gathering wood for the family, they ran faster than Bernadette, and Bernadette, because of her asthma, was, was delayed. So when she arrived, she sat on a rock and was getting ready to take off her woolen socks and her wooden uh, and her clogs in order to cross over to the river. Where her sister and her friend were already across the river and looked at Bernadette and said, Don't cross the river, Bernadette. Mother's going to be upset because you're going to get an asthma attack and you may get sick. So Bernadette said, Oh, I, I want to go and collect wood with you. So as she was taking off her woolen socks, 
She noticed all of a sudden this gust of wind that crossed her and she ignored it at first, but then it became a bit stronger, this gust of wind. And as she looked to see where it was coming from, she saw that the trees nearby were, the leaves were not rustling. They, they stood still. This was very curious. So as she gazed towards a grotto, she saw a beautiful woman dressed in white with blue and yellow roses at her feet. She had a blue veil and a white, uh, a white dress. When Bernadette saw her, she went, approached this, the grotto where Our Lady stood on a niche and began to just look at her. The lady took out her rosary and began to pray the rosary, not out loud, but moving the beads with her finger. Bernadette knelt, took the rosary out of her pocket and began to pray the rosary. And so she describes that as just a very peaceful moment. The lady did not introduce herself to Bernadette, nor did she give her name or the reason of her apparition. But Bernadette prayed the rosary. So after this, the apparition went away and her sister and her friend came back and wondered what was going on with Bernadette. She seemed to be in a different world. Bernadette all of a sudden was aware of what was going on around her and told her sister and friend, promise me you won't tell mother or anyone else what I'm going to share with you. And she shared the entire story of what she saw. Now, let me just back up a bit. The grotto where this lady appeared in the niche in the grotto was also used as a, a trash dump. Uh, pigs would come and gather because they would eat the food that was dumped there. It wasn't really a very pleasant place but it was near the river and like I said earlier, the public land that was available to gather wood was near this grotto. So that's quite interesting. Keep that in mind as we continue our story of St. Bernadette. So the three girls promised each other, they weren't, the, the girls promised Bernadette, I will not tell anyone, I promise, and they ran home. They noticed that Bernadette ran home as well without losing her breath and they thought that was quite unusual and unique. Upon arriving at home that evening, as the mother was gathering the wood and, and getting ready to cook their evening meal, um, her sister blurted out, oh, I have to tell you what Bernadette saw. And so Bernadette said, you promised. Well, so the mother found out exactly what Bernadette, about Bernadette's experience and her father as well. And they told Bernadette they are not, to, she was not to go back to the grotto. The family had a lot of hardships, you know, in the meantime, people, the word got out, people were ridiculing the, the Subaru family, um, but Bernadette in her heart had a conviction. She knew that this was very special. She felt peace. She saw this beautiful woman and her mother kept asking, who was she? And Bernadette said, I don't know. She was beautiful as someone like I have never seen before. Now. She went back the following day and there were all together 18 apparitions from February to the summer of 1858. But I want to point out a couple of the apparitions. The first one was February the 11th of 1858. And then the, uh, the other one that she, I, I want to tell you about is the one that appeared a day, a few days later when she weren't, the th when she went the third time. During this third time is when Our Lady spoke for the first time to Bernadette, and this is what she said. What I want to tell you does not have to be written down. Would you be so good as to come back here for 15 days? I do not promise you happiness in this world, but in the next. The very first words of this beautiful lady to Bernadette. Now Bernadette took that to heart. And she didn't quite understand everything, but she what was understood in her simple heart and her deep faith was that there was a certain, there was a peace and that there was a beauty, uh, the sacred beauty, if you want to say. She prayed, she admired this beautiful woman, and there was no sense of danger or anything that was opposite of what she felt, which was total peace and beauty. She continued to go back and on the eighth apparition, February the 24th, 
Our Lady spoke to her again, and this time she told Bernadette these words, Repent, repent, repent. Pray to God for sinners. The following apparition was the ninth one, which occurred the following day, and Our Lady told Bernadette to drink from the spring. So Bernadette thought it was the river Gave, which was right next to the grotto, where the river flows, it's clear water, it's uh, from the mountains nearby. And so she went, and Our Lady said no, and she pointed to the inside area of the grotto. She said she, she told me it wasn't there I was to drink. With her finger pointed under the rock, I went there and found only a little water. I put my hand in it and was unable to take any. Then I dug with my hands and was so able to take some water. Three times I drew the water away since it was dirty. Then the fourth time I managed to drink. Now by this time the word had gotten out and people were witnessing this unusual circumstance of Bernadette digging in this grotto. There were 1,500 people present looking. Some were curious spectators, but many were filled with faith and they believed that St. Bernadette saw something heavenly or divine. Later, on March the 2nd, which was the 13th apparition, the lady told Bernadette to tell the priest to build a shrine there and to ask people to, to come in procession and pray the rosary. When Bernadette ran to tell the priest about this, her pastor, he just nodded his head, shook his head and could not believe it. He knew Bernadette um, was of a good family and sound mind, but could not understand what was going on. So he, um, who was this lady appearing to Bernadette? He kept asking, you know, her mother. Well, three apparitions later, which was really the one that is very key in this whole story, occurred on March 25th, 1858. By now, there were 8,000 people present. And when Bernadette asked Our Lady to, for her identity and her name, this time she responded. And Our Lady, and St. Bernadette describes exactly how Our Lady looked when she responded to Bernadette with her name. She placed her hands before her, above her chest, Look, her eyes looking up to heaven, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Bernadette had never heard of the Immaculate Conception. Remember, she was not really, she had missed a lot of school, plus <clears throat> she was also missing a lot of catechism classes, which were religion classes, and she was hoping to receive First Holy Communion. Here she was, 14 years old so much yearning to receive Holy Communion, but couldn't because of her lack of attending the required formation to learn and understand this beautiful sacrament. She repeated it over and over, I am the Immaculate Conception. So she could remember the exact words, she ran to her pastor, the priest, and told Father, Father, the lady gave her name. She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Well, you can imagine, Father just was astounded. You see, four years earlier, in 1854, Pope Pius IX had proclaimed a Marian dogma that Mary was conceived without original sin. That Marian dogma is called the Immaculate Conception, and that is what it means. Mary was conceived without original sin. He knew of this Marian dogma that was proclaimed four years earlier, but how could Bernadette know and understand it? at her age, at her level of education, lack of education in, in this case. So um, this was the sign. The priest believed her, and indeed he saw again in her the humility, the sincerity, the honesty, the conviction of the whole story from February the 11th through March the 25th, observing Bernadette and certainly talking with her family who was already a very faithful, sound family. This is an incredible story. Not only did the spring water that came up from the grotto was built into like a fountain where people can gather water as, as um, to bless themselves because they believe that this was a miracle, and indeed it was. And even today, that water, that spring water, uh, there's a, um, channels that are go through various outlets, water outlets, where people can collect this water from Lourdes in plastic containers and bring home to bless their family members. There have been miracles documented by people who have gone to Lourdes, 
ask that Our Lady's intercession and our Lord's mercy for healing, and they have occurred healing. The water is um, a mystery, but it's really a reminder of our baptism. There's a lot of messages here in Lourdes. Not only the water reminding us of our baptismal water, that we're born again as children of God, being renewed no matter what our situation is, our soul has imprint of God upon us because now we're adopted sons and daughters of God, but also the fact that the whole story of Mary's apparitions to Bernadette from February the 11th through March 25th were incredible. Her, her messages were simple. She prayed the rosary in the beginning. She told Bernadette, pray, pray, pray the rosary, repent, pray for the, for, for the conversion of sinners. And so, and then she gave the people of God the spring water. During this time, after this March 25th apparition, uh, scientists came in asking her questions, her family questions about what was happening. They wanted to document, is this truly for real? Although her pastor and the people of God believed in the apparitions, it needed to be proven or it needed to be studied by the secular leaders. And they were, they were studying Bernadette. Her and her family suffered a lot because she went through a lot of questioning and physical exams and mental exams. At the end, they concluded this, this young girl, Bernadette, at the age of 14, indeed saw something that they couldn't understand. And they saw the fruit. Thousands of people started coming in processions. And by the time Bernadette, she was still living, there was a chapel built in, at that grotto as Our Lady asked and people were coming in procession. So what happened to, to Bernadette? Well, through prayer and discernment and spiritual direction from her pastor, she decided to become a religious nun. She entered the Order of the Sisters of Charity in Nevers, France. She did visit the Holy Grotto just one more time. She knew she would never return here. Her religious name was Sister Mary Bernard, and that was her baptismal name. There she completed her religion instruction. She was very happy to be there with the nuns. It was a big community. Um, she re was so just so satisfied in living God's holy will for her, was being a nun. And her, the nuns would tell, would tell other, uh, would describe Bernadette as being so kind and being holy, but having a sense of humor and so patient with the sick and those other, uh, the sisters who were elderly and, and sick, she would tend to them. And so despite of all this, you know, she still had those asthma attacks and contracted tuberculosis of the bones in her legs. At this time, she is now in her early 30s and because of the tuberculosis in her legs, there was a tumor in one of her knees, <coughs> excuse me, that caused extreme pain so much so, with every walk, every step she took, she had pain and she would walk with a limp. But she never complained. She never complained until they found out. They asked her, why are you limping? Are you in pain? Well, they discovered that the tumor had worsened. She had to be bedridden. So she was confined to her bed. And did she remember the words of Our Lady to her? I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the other. Her sisters, the religious sisters, her sisters in Christ, took care of Bernadette. They found her at peace, praying and giving compliments to the other nuns. She died at the age of 35 on April the 16th, 1879, at the hour of mercy, 3 p.m. One day she summarized her whole life, her whole mission and message on a piece of paper. She, this is what she wrote. To obey is to love. To suffer in silence for Christ is joy. To love sincerely is to give everything, even grief. By the time of her death, the Basilica and Lord had been built and consecrated at the apparition site under the leadership of her pastor. Bernadette was canonized um, in 1933, not too far long after her death, not for having seen the apparition of Our Lady, but for the way in which she responded to the call to pray and to serve, to offer sacrifices for the conversion of sinners, and to live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. We too can respond to Our Lady's message 
to pray the rosary, to pray for others, to offer up our sacrifices, our pains. Bernadette's body was found to be incorrupt and can be seen in the chapel today in Nevers, France. The message of Lourdes is that of prayer, especially to pray the rosary, to repent of our sins, and to be faithful to God, to spend silent time in prayer with God. Remember, Mary did, did not say anything on the first apparition. She simply prayed the rosary with Bernadette. Why should we not take up the rosary ourselves and pray the rosary daily and respond to Our Lady to pray for the conversion of sinners? And as we do, we're also receiving graces. We too are receiving the graces needed from Our Lady. It only takes 20 minutes to pray the entire rosary. And ask Bernadette to pray for you and guide you to a closer relationship with Jesus and his mother Mary. Saint Bernadette, pray for us. We can become friends with the saints in heaven. They can encourage us and inspire us indeed. Following this, you will find a podcast that will, it's an audio program that you can listen to on our website or on your favorite podcast app about taking lessons from St. Bernadette and her life and what we can learn from her today for us. Thank you again for joining me. I'm so glad you were able to meet this young girl from Lourdes, France, Bernadette Subaru. And remember that we can be inspired by the saints each day in our lives. Encourage them, or actually I should say, I encourage you to ask them to walk with you each day with great hope and great faith.